this in my opinion is the real elephant in the room right and i think this will be part of the title of the show if you are watching this after the fact so this clip is taken from the joe rogan experience featuring ari shafir and big jay okerson and they're essentially talking about um stand-up comedians and the quality of them and sometimes when you have this occasion where you meet somebody in stand-up who happens to be a stand-up you like them first but then you realize they're terrible at stand-up after the fact then it kind of taints how much you like them because now you don't want to be mean and tell them they're crap at what they do but you do like them as a person so that kind of conundrum and then rogan mentions something interesting kind of on a sly which may explain why brendan Shaw hasn't been booked yet at the comedy mothership because so far we've seen Derek poston We've seen that other guy, I think his name is Essan or Hassan, something, I forgot his surname, please forgive me. Those two guys used to write for Flipping Brendan back in the day. We've seen Eric Griffin now recently, who's a co-host on the Flipping, oh, my hands look kind of dry here, don't they? Um, we've seen Eric Griffin, who's a co-host on the Flipping Golden Hour. He's recently got books to do, a com, you know, Eric Griffin and Friends at the Mothership. So slowly but surely, Rogan is picking and choosing people from LA who he's fans of to have performing at his show. But we haven't seen Brendan perform there, even though him and Flip and Joe are good friends. And we haven't seen Callum perform there, actually, even though him and Joe are good friends. And Chris Lee, we also know that's not going to happen because, you know, those allegations. But it's been very interesting to see that kind of happen in real time of like, oh, these guys kind of pretend like they're best friends and they've got each other's back. But actually, you can tell a lot about what they think about each other via their actions especially when it comes to stand-up who do they go on tour with who do they let open for them bloody blah 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 will kind of let you know how they see each other in terms of the hierarchy or the quality in flipping stand-up and material that they got so with this little comment that rogan made it's clear to see that rogan does not rate brendan stand-up and that's the main reason why he hasn't been invited to the comedy mothership that is just a guess that is just a theory an assumption that i'm plucking out from the air from listening to these guys talk i have no further information they didn't say that word for word because some people have been complaining in the comments that i'm just you know what's that thing called that i am making things up or making dumb assumptions i know i am that's the beauty of youtube you make dumb assumptions you talk out of your ass and i love to talk i'm a bum bum so this is rogan saying the same thing that i just said a minute ago uh, there's a bunch of oh, those. this hurts yeah it's unfortunate you know yeah. because sometimes you become friends with them before you see their set yeah <laughs> and then you see them and they you know they, they want to come on your do. podcast or they want to uh you know hey you know i know you're doing a show in minneapolis i'm actually from there i'd love to open for you like <sighs> yeah now we got a problem i know oh, you gotta go i, like, I just booked somebody and you gotta there. scramble to no, get no, somebody no. right there you, you kind of have to have a real conversation with them otherwise it's going to keep coming up but you got to kind of <sighs> figure out a way to say it in a way that's yeah, fortunately, I haven't, I haven't had to do that to suck. too many people. Yeah, I'm not that person. It's not even. Th it's You'll just, just like, take it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I just, e I'll e absolutely take it. So interesting comment there, right? And first of all, I have to say, I kind of respect Rogan for being like, "Hey, no, you have to have that conversation." I kind of like that because I'd imagine a lot of people kind of are also thankful of it when they find out that he doesn't rate their comedy because it at least lets you know where you stand so you're not kind of in this weird space where you're not too sure what's happened why he's not inviting you to the show why doesn't he ever put you on the road why doesn't he ever let you in open when you ask the question and he actually answers and is honest and says hey i just don't think you're funny i don't think you match my style that's actually pretty cool because you'd imagine in that pod into a pod, in that comedy scene a lot of people are quite bushy-washy they're kind of vague they don't really say how they feel or what they mean and you're kind of left sometimes always not knowing where you stand with people so it's quite nice that the top guy in that industry is very honest and is able if you ask him to say hey i don't want this you know i don't want that as fear vaughn would say right or fear vaughn as people kept telling me that i say fear vaughn i should say fear vaughn but anyway that's what Vaughn would say so i get that and i like that but one thing that's really hilarious a lot of people have been saying out here is that rogan kind of thrust brendan out onto the stage he catapulted him to success and to stardom but didn't really so no he catapulted to stardom so now he's kind of to blame for basically unleashing rogan uh, or at least you onto the world and kind of subjecting us to flipping you'd be surprised and gringo happy and whatever else he makes in the future like people are saying it's rogan's fault 
I don't believe that. I think it's mostly Brendan's fault. I think it's not Rogan's fault for looking out for his friend <clears throat> and trying to do right by him, especially after he made him quit the UFC. He kind of did what a good friend would do and basically gave him an, uh, a kind of um, a sec a backup plan that then led to him becoming richer and more successful than he ever would have done in any other avenue that he would have pursued that didn't work out for him. So credit to Rogan for being a good friend. It's not his fault that Brennan didn't do comedy the quote-unquote right way to kind of make sure that he gave himself the best chance to be successful and to be funny he just went kind of the short way took shortcuts and um, took advantage of people's generosity of the friendship we had with rogan and essentially kind of went and hurt him as well in the long run because now you're seeing that rogan despite being a little bit up his own ass and quite insufferable one thing that rogan does have and takes seriously is stand up he's a real student of the game and he doesn't suffer fools gladly when it comes to swa so i kind of do like him and his ability to be really honest when it comes to stand-up especially amongst his friends he doesn't you can tell he's not the kind of guy that's going to put somebody on just because they're friends he actually actually like you and that's a really good um that kind of makes you trust what he has to say about stand-up more yeah big up fresh out of the water baddie thanks for helping me through another 10 hours shift <laughs> no worries fresh out of water buddy happy to help man this is this is kind of slightly been my dream anyway because i think i mentioned it prior um i don't have many irl friends and one of the things i used to always love when i was at work was to slap on a flipping podcast and listen to that for hours on end especially if i was working in the stock room of some retail store somewhere you just slap on a podcast and listen to it while you're doing your work at the back and literally the hours go by so quickly and then you realize it's lunchtime then you realize it's the end of the day and you're kind of going home straight away and I absolutely loved it so my dream always was when i was doing these live streams was that i wanted it always to be the perfect accompanying thing that you can listen to in the background you don't have to actively listen to my shit and kind of sit there and take notes what i'm saying is never that serious it's just about providing you guys with uh decent stuff to put on the background that's somewhat entertaining if i could do that then i'm happy then i'm happy but yeah so big up rogan anyway going back to what i was saying big up rogan for being honest with his friends and saying it will how he feels and what about their quality of their flipping stand-up but this is also should be a pretty sad thing for brennan to realize that even though they're friends and they, they used to be quite a, more, way closer than they are now, he knows for sure that Rogan doesn't think he's funny. That must be brutal to take. For all the sucking up he's done, for all the getting on his knees, all the fellatio he's given to Rogan, it hasn't amounted to nothing because at the end of the day, you can go on there and do as much as he wants in terms of promotion on his show, which he doesn't do that much either because he doesn't guest on there as much as he did before it's clear to see that Rogan doesn't find the guy funny in the slightest, which is why he doesn't want him to play at his club. Pretty brutal, isn't it? But it's also good that there's that honesty that exists in the comedy world. It isn't just all, we're comedy podcast friends and we're going to try and convince the audience that we're also murderers. No, no, no. Murderers only play at the comedy mothership. Murderers only play 